Hey folks, welcome back. When you start a new track in any DAW, you usually start with some rough idea, maybe pads, maybe drums, maybe bass, or some kind of random sample. I usually start with some pads or keys to make a drone or, you know, just make some ambience for the track to make the listener used to the key. And this time it's nothing different. And I want to show you here something, how you can create something very lush from scratch, okay? So inside of Bitwig here, we have nothing at the moment, but we want to change that. So we create here on the instrument track, we create a phase four synthesizer. Looks like this, sounds like this. Pretty basic, but we don't down here the first operator to sign, bring the shape down, uh, bring here the modulation down. On the second operator, we use sign here, maybe two, uh, second formant, then we go here to five, this to one. Uh, then we use here the modulation amount of the uh, filter envelope here, just to make some kind of this kind of type of bell sound. Um, then we bring down the mod here and maybe use velocity for the mod, maybe not too much. So when we hit the keys harder, right? We get more overtones. And then we probably want to have a bit of release here, also for this a bit of release. And then we want to increase the voices here to 16. And we have some kind of lush digital piano sound, um, which I really like for some reason. And we could throw on that here some random reverbs. We could choose the reverb of Bitwig Studio, right? But this would, would be too basic. So uh, we are creative here, right? We are Bitwig users, so we do things more creatively. So I'm using, of course, an FX grid. And I want to create here a small little reverb. And you can do this pretty easily now uh, with all the new devices. So we have here an all pass, does something like this. So it's basically a kind of a feedback loop here with a small delay in there. And I think also the feedback is phase inverted. So this is how it works. Then after that, we use a phaser plus with some random preset here or kind of mode or character. Uh, we also switch this here to stereo, maybe less feedback, maybe not too much modulation here. After that, again, a new all pass. After that, we use a chorus plus. Use eight voices here, which I really like. Makes it very wide. Right. Then we probably want to use here in the beginning of the chain, we want to use a low pass and probably also a high pass. Every re reverb uses, uses this kind of setup here. You want to keep certain frequencies out of the reverb, right? So all the low frequencies and all the very high frequencies here. Why not use another all pass here? And here maybe we use another, or oh, let's go for a flanger. Yeah, let's use a flanger here. Not too much modulation, too much feedback. We can also insert here a filter, um, SVF, maybe in the middle, and then use a notch, and then just remove everything at 500 hertz. Uh, it's usually a frequency you don't want to overemphasize in the reverb anyway. Or maybe 300 or 200. So now we created basically this nice reverb here on top of this uh, Tynes or digital piano sound.
Okay, so we have our first reverb here that we created basically from scratch. And it's the special thing about this, this is completely unique. No one else has this, right? Because it's our own chain. Uh, we created our own little reverb here that sounds pretty special just in this tune, okay? So this is the reverb. After that, we use an FX grid. Um, and go in here and we want to create something um, that's that makes noise. So we use noise, white noise, duplicate this here, use pink noise, or we use pink noise. We use attenuator here to change the volume of the second one. And we use a multiply. I showed this also in some kind of video here, how I did this. So basically the second noise decides about the loudness of the first noise here, which gives you some kind of um, yeah, uh, crackling noise. So it gives you this kind of vinyl sound, in my opinion. So we need here uh, some kind of filter, low pass, Jennifer low pass, maybe a high pass. Right, and then we want to mix this with the original signal and we can do this by using maybe an uh, AMRM, which is amplitude modulation, ring modulation here, with the original signal. So now we don't hear actually the crackling noise here. We only hear this when the sound goes through that. I hope you can hear that. Uh, so it reacts basically to the audio input. Um, we can also do maybe something like, can put in here an envelope follower. So it follows the envelope of the sound and we modulate maybe here the uh, high pass or something like that, or the low pass. Um, so it reacts now to the audio even more. Sounds a bit like Twin Peaks. <laughs> um, okay, so this sounds okay-ish. Um, maybe we introduce here a bit of low pass, another Jennifer low pass to simulate a bit of tape here because it removes probably a lot of high end. Okay, so this is our lo-fi um, preset here. So this is basically also unique. No one else has this in this kind of setup. Everyone does it a bit differently. And um, yeah, I basically want to encourage you to try out these things inside of the grid to make these small little setups. So you have your own little small devices that sound unique to you to, to build your own sound design or to build your own sound character. Um, and I found this heavily inspiring most of the times to try this out. It also is a kind of a way of practicing the grid and sound design in general, instead of, you know, buying another plugin on some kind of random sale and just throw it on there and then, you know, be not satisfied at all. So just go in the grid here, throw a bunch of these devices together and create interesting sounds this way. And by the way, all these grids here are in monophonic mode. So you can see the voices are mono, right? Lo-fi, mono. So it runs on its own. So make sure everything is on monophonic. Uh, so one voice is always active. Okay, so we have a reverb, we have lo-fi here. And then here we want to create something I showed you in um, yesterday's, uh, two days ago, uh, in a video, how to create basically uh, pitch shifter effect and I made some progress in the sound design and I'll show you this here. So we use a mod delay. Um, we go here to four notes, eight, eight quarter notes. Um, then I use here an LFO. 
put this on that, disable praising here the pre chord and I use the transport sync for that. Go into that, slow down by minus 50%. Let's see how it works. Oh, we need to set this here to quarter and then also eight quarter notes. And then in the video I used to change here or to get rid of this crackling sound, I used to have here a mirror, a mirror and I think I used, I used a band and a multiply to basically get rid of the, of the click sound when we switch here the, uh, when we switch basically delay timing here from, from zero to one. Uh, but this doesn't work for me that well. And also someone in the comments said, um, just use a window, which does basically the same. It's a bit smarter to use, use it this way. Uh, but this also doesn't work for me. I still hear at certain points some crackling. And the volume fade is way too big. So the only thing that worked for me very well is, is when I used a curve module here and I just draw in, or can I reset this? Yeah. And I just drew in a kind of custom curve, eight nodes, let's go to eight here. Um, synchronize this, retrigger is off. Okay. And now I can basically here draw in at certain points where I want to remove the crackling sound. Right, you can see it's here. So I used to just do this. Maybe put this here, down here, and put this over here. At least it made it way smoother than using just window or the mirror method in my opinion because here i can just um, paint in where i want to remove the crackle and i think the problem with the window method and um, and the mirror method is that this delay basically also delays the point uh, where this position or this signal change happens here. I think this this uh, why this crackling noise is at a completely different position than you get here with the LFO and the mirror uh, trick. So in my opinion, this is way better um, to make it this way. Okay, and then I used another mod delay here in front just to create some uh, some feedback here to basically hold this node longer. And we probably also want to have here uh, a low pass and maybe a high pass. Or maybe we want to have this here at the end. We don't want to get too low here with the frequencies. And then we put here in the post FX maybe a curve, oh, not a curve, um, a convolution reverb. 
And also the reverb itself you can use in the prefx you also convolution. So I really like to combine different uh, reverb methods lately. And then we maybe can build here another FX grid and can create in that FX grid some kind of pitch wobble. So I just use here a delay and use an LFO or maybe a random LFO. This one here, disable this one, also the timing, smoothing all the way up. So this gives you this tape feel. So this is very fun to play around with these kind of devices here. Um, this is our slow-mo effect and this is here our pitch wobble. Okay, so now that we have this, we can maybe also um, use your sequencer, step sequencer. I already showed you dial in some pictures here, uh, something like that. Then use a polymer here, use a different wavetable, use the sub oscillator here, use the pressure for that and use maybe timbre for decay times. Let's see how this sounds. This sounds, yeah, it sounds nice. And I want to show you basically also when I use reverbs, right, instead of just using a reverb here or some VST device, I just usually go for combinations of convolution to bring in a bit of realness, real rooms. You can also use your shorter rooms, it doesn't matter, just to bring in some tonality or some physicality to the sound. And then after that I'm using um, Delay Plus, for instance. And we have here of course these diffusion methods, reversed space, for instance, right? Um, we can also use the freeze me method, uh, which is nice. Also a bit of ducking. Um, let's play this here. And everything is just mixed in a bit. And then maybe at the end you delay too. And maybe put all of that into a chain. call it reverb. So, so instead of one, just one VSC device or one device, Bitwig device, I'm using multiple devices, different methods of creating reverbs, convolution based on impulse responses, then an algorithmic reverb, another algorithmic reverb and a delay, and maybe an FX grid at the end. So combining this stuff makes really nice reverbs or delay lines in my opinion. So I'm creating basically reverbs from scratch every time in different ways. It's time of audience for this here. So we have a nice sound here playing. Peak limiter, the end. It's very too much noise.
And we can also um, put the pitch whip wobble maybe on the master. So it's the same pitch change for all devices at, at once. A bit slower. Still too much noise. Yeah, and that's a nice starting point for some kind of random track you want to do. Maybe add some drums, maybe make it a drum bass tune. I don't know. I just want to give you basically some inspiration for starting a track or maybe coming up with some interesting ideas for um, yeah, creating sounds or sound effects from scratch. And it makes... Um, makes use of all the grid modules or the possibilities inside of Bitwig Studio. And I think Bitwig Studio is highly creative, so you should also take some um, creative steps every time you start a track. And the grid makes it possible. I want to give you basically some inspiration for that. Uh, try it out instead of just, you know, using the next fancy plugin or whatever, VST, and throw it on there, skip through the presets. It's not that fun in my opinion. That's fun. Start using Bitwig the Bitwig way. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.